Hey all, welcome to today's class. So in the last session, we learned about the terms and uh, the principles of food processing. And now let's move into the next syllabus. So that is the methods of food processing. So there are various methods of food processing. We'll just go in detail. Here, we will study about two types. One is the preservation and processing by heat. And the other one is a preservation and processing by cold. Okay, under each category, we've got a number of uh, types. So let's learn them one by one. But for now, in this class, we will learn about the preservation and processing by heat. So this preservation or processing by heat is also termed as thermal processing. So this is one of the most common methods. So when you go to any kind of food industry or when you go to your house, like when you take your house, so we usually preserve okay, food by heating. So this is one of the traditional method. So what are the types and types of preservation and types of processing by heat? So before that, let's get into definition of thermal processing okay what do you mean by thermal processing this thermal processing is nothing but okay it is it is defined as a combination of temperature and time required to eliminate a desired number of microorganisms from a food product so we all know very clearly like each microorganism that We'll have like so many types of microorganisms, some are mesophiles, thermophiles, psychotropes, and so, so, and so on. So here, like uh, each microorganism will have a combination of temperature and time. So we will fix that temperature and we'll fix the time to reduce the microorganism, especially the harmful microorganism. So this process, which uses a combination of temperature, and time is called as thermal processing one more time so they might ask you so dash is defined as a combination of temperature and time required to eliminate a desired number of microorganisms from a food product so the answer is thermal processing now this thermal okay as we all know we've studied uh, very well like thermal always refers to heat so heating food is an effective way of preserving so when most of us okay we heat the food and we'll have it so we say that when we heat the food most of the harmful microorganisms are destroyed so uh, when harmful microorganisms are destroyed the quality of the food would be increased and it won't cause us any kind of disease like food poisoning or food infection or something like that okay now what is the basic purpose for thermal processing so we all know like the basic purpose is nothing but to reduce or to destroy the microbial activity okay uh, if there's any kind of a microbial growth okay uh, in any of the food definitely the consumer okay will fall sick okay it it will affect the quality of the product and it would cause us uh, many problems so the main purpose would be to destroy the microbial activity in food okay they either destroy it or they reduce it and when you talk about the microbial activity we usually okay consider the harmful microbes and the next point it is nothing but uh here we reduce or destroy the enzyme activity we all know when we take any kind of like uh, fruit veg vegetable so we'll have some enzymes in them so this uh this what um this hastens the process of ripening or any other process so when we control those enzymes we can increase the shelf life of the product and we can also increase the quality of the product so uh it helps us to meet the increasing demand of population and this is also one of the basic purpose for thermal processing and next 
the basic purpose is to produce some physical or chemical change okay for example uh, we can't okay here we don't eat raw meat okay in india so when you heat it okay so the physical that there, there are some physical changes there are some chemical changes so this is also one of the basic purpose like to uh, satisfy the consumer preference so we uh, so uh, to produce the physical or chemical changes we keep the food so this is also one of the basic purpose next to make the food meet a certain quality standard for example we can't consume raw milk because we know that raw milk contains some bacteria so uh, in order to destroy them we need to heat or boil the milk so uh, when we heat or boil the milk the harmful bacteria okay in milk can be destroyed so this okay this gives us a quality uh, this gives us a very good quality milk which is fit for consumption so what are the basic purpose of thermal processing to destroy or reduce microbial activity to destroy or reduce enzyme activity or to produce physical or chemical changes and the last one is to meet some quality standard next okay types of thermal processing so here we have some three types one is blanching pasteurization and sterilization there's also another thing called canning so we will learn in detail about each type here we will learn about blanching okay in this class we will concentrate more on blanching now what is blanching blanching is nothing but we subject either any kind of food produce to a heat treatment okay uh, the primary purpose of blanching is to destroy the enzyme activity in fruit and vegetables okay it uh, it actually fulfills the second basic purpose it destroys the enzyme activity so when you subject a fruit or a vegetable to heat treatment make sure okay we have to make sure that this heat treatment is done only for few minutes hardly one to two minutes if we exceed okay we might okay get a cooked flavor or it uh, it destroys okay any kind of nutrients also which is required okay uh, for a human being for a healthy human being okay so we need to be very careful like what temperature we are uh, we are using and what time okay we are subjecting the fruit and vegetables right now they say that this launching is not okay a sole method of preservation okay it is not a sole method of preservation this blanching will not preserve okay will not completely preserve the food whereas this is used as a pre-treatment prior to freezing drying and canning okay when you subject something to launching a fruit or a vegetable uh, it won't okay it won't increase the shelf life whereas this blanching has to be combined with any other process okay any other process to okay to uh, to be intended okay as a sole method of preservation i think you got it now what are the functions of blanching again it reduces the surface microbial contamination so when we okay pluck fruits or vegetables okay from trees or plants what happens is that there are lots there are lots of chances for many kind of contamination so to reduce those contamination we use blanching okay now second thing is that the vegetable tissues okay are to be softened okay uh, to facilitate the filling into containers okay softening of vegetables is very important so this can be done using blanching and next the third point is that you have to remove air from the intercellular spaces prior to canning okay so when air okay is like when there's air in intercellular spaces and when you can such type of food there is a chance not there is a chance there is a 
actually there's a chance for a complete okay for complete spoilage so to reduce that okay we need to subject a fruit or a vegetable to blanching so what are the functions of blanching it is nothing but it reduces the surface microbial contamination next uh, it softens the vegetable tissues and it also removes air from intercellular spaces now this blanching okay can, can be carried up to 100 degrees celsius this is very important and one more thing we need to note is that this blanching okay has to be done only okay maximum temperature would be one to two minutes not more than that only a few minutes okay just have a note of it and uh, this blanching okay can be done either by using hot water and the temperature here is 100 degrees celsius or it is also okay it is also carried out by steam okay now yeah so i said uh blanching okay can either done by hot water or steam so for hot water we use hot water blanches and for steam we use steam blanchers here this steam blancher uh, okay is, it is this is mostly preferred in food industry because there is a less amount of uh, leaching loss what do you mean by leaching loss leaching loss is nothing but all okay all fruits and all vegetables contain certain number of vitamins minerals and nutrients and when you subject okay a fruit or a vegetable to a blanching what happens is that some water soluble vitamins okay will get lost so this process is called as leaching so this leaching okay can be reduced when you subject or a fruit or a vegetable to steam blanching next okay so we learned uh now we are learning about the preservation by heat here we learned about blanching in this class we specifically concentrated on blanching so what is the effect of heat on microorganisms? For example, we've got different processes like pasteurization, blanching, sterilization, and so on. So when we subject some kind of a produce or a food to such type of heat, what effect does it have on microorganism? So let's have a look on it. They say that so most bacteria, yeast, and molds they usually grow between 16 to 38 degrees Celsius. Okay, just have a note of it. Mesophiles usually grow between 16 to 38 degrees Celsius, and some okay, like uh, those bacteria, okay, or yeast or molds they do not grow below 5 degrees Celsius or above 45 degrees Celsius. So, this is the limit. So the organisms which grow above 45 degrees Celsius, what are they? They are nothing but 66 like thermophils. Okay, the organisms which grow above 45 degrees Celsius are called as thermophils. Okay, you need to be knowing it. So mesophiles temperature is 16 to 38 degrees Celsius and thermophiles the temperature would be 66 to 82 degrees Celsius. And we should also know that the organisms, okay, in general, okay, cannot grow below 5 degrees Celsius or above 45 degrees celsius and if they sub, if suppose they grow so they are put into different category like thermophiles and the psychotropes now here the most most here they say that most bacteria are killed in the range of 82 to 90 degrees celsius so when you subject a food produce to 100 degrees celsius we know that the any kind of bacterial contamination can be removed so this is also very important however bacterial spores and certain other heat resistant forms can withstand prolonged exposure to 100 degrees celsius so you see so there is some uh, exception like the bacterial spores and also some heat resistant forms they can uh, withstand up to 100 degrees celsius so they can endure this temperature for nearly five and a half hours okay just know the temperature know the timing and just see what what uh, species like the bacterial spores and the heat resistant forms they grow like till 100 degrees celsius however uh, they last only minutes at 120 degrees celsius okay when you heat up to 120 degrees celsius they can last only 
it uh, for some minutes and it destroyed in moist heat at 100 degrees Celsius in about 15 minutes. So when you subject a, a produce which is contaminated, okay, to 120 degrees Celsius, they can last only for minutes, okay. But when you subject it to a moist heat at 100 degrees Celsius, they can survive only up to 15 minutes, okay. Next. The thermal death of microorganism in dry hair is usually due to oxidation, okay. Dry hair means it is usually due to oxidation and if you uh, like heat it with wet heat or wet hair, so this is actually due to coagulation, okay. Next. So, the factors, okay, the thermal dread trait kinetics of microorganisms. The factors affecting the heat resistance of microorganisms are age of cell. Okay, when the cells are younger, they show less heat resistance. Okay, next, the initial conservation of spore or cells. More the number greater, more the number greater the heat treatment. So when you have, when the initial concentration is really high, okay, the great, the heat treatment has to be really high. Next. The medium, okay, uh, in which the microorganisms grow. Okay, so for example, when the medium is more nutritious, the heat resistance increase. So next, let's learn about the moisture content. What happens, okay? The dry food always tend to require more severe heat treatment during sterilization, okay? Which type of food requires more heat treatment? Dry food, okay? Next, pH. So this, okay, the pH, you know, uh, the pH of a medium cell or spore have great heat resistance at or natural pH values. Okay, the spores are much more resistant than vegetative cells. Just have a look at it, just jot it down. Now, this is one of the important part. We usually get at least one question from such type, okay? The D value is nothing but the time at a given temperature to cause one log cycle decrease in cell numbers. And Z value is nothing but the temperature required to give one log cycle decrease in the D value. What is F0 value? It is nothing but time at 121 degrees Celsius to give a 12 log cycle decrease in the spore or cells of a given organism. Okay, just remember this D is nothing but it deals with temperature, Z is nothing but it deals with the temperature. I'm sorry, D okay is nothing but it deals with time, and Z is nothing but it deals with temperature and F0 value. Okay. It's nothing but a time at 121 degree Celsius. Yeah, that's all for today's class. Have a nice day. Do subscribe, like and share.